the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC releases in just 10 days. Among the various returning Pokemon is the long-awaited and feared Incineroar. This marks the third time Incineroar has shaken up a metagame midway through a generation. Its powerful move list, along with its phenomenal stats, typing, and ability, makes it a force to be reckoned with in VGC. But just how will Incineroar's presence affect the Regulation F metagame, which was announced to begin in January? Today, we'll discuss its strengths and the various Pokemon we can expect to rise in usage, whether it be to beat Incineroar or work alongside it on a team. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, because I'm on my way to 500,000 subscribers and post tons of competitive Pokemon content just like this. But first, this channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTED at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. So Regulation F just got announced a few days back and I want to talk about the basically just Incineroar. Regulation F is the Incineroar format, uh, but I do want to let you know, you know, the rules before we get into this. Uh, in the sixth regulation series of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Area, Regulation F uh, is the first after the release of the Indigo Disc, and it included a variety of returning Pokemon as well as various new Pokemon. It, they don't have the specific rules stated, but basically uh, what we know is that uh, basically every Pokemon in the DLC that is confirmed and isn't a restricted Pokemon is legal. Currently, we have no confirmation that the Pokemon home Pokemon like Urshifu or whatever will be banned or anything. Uh, some people are hopeful. I personally don't believe they'll ever do that. Uh, a lot of people think like, oh, hey, you know, to extend the format, maybe they'll ban Pokemon like Urshifu and stuff and then bring them back later on. I don't believe that. I'm going to assume that Urshifu is going to be legal uh, for my little video I'm doing here, but yeah, we're going to talk about specifically how Incineroar is going to affect the metagame and Pokemon that I expect to rise in usage because they either beat him or they just work really well alongside him. So if you guys enjoy this land point in time, you know, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and let's go ahead and get into it. So if you're unaware, if, if you've like never played VGC before Generation 9, you might not know that Incineroar is considered the greatest Pokemon of all time when it comes to VGC or doubles formats in general. Uh, Incineroar is a Pokemon with phenomenal bulk, 95 HP, 90 defense, 90 special defense with the ability Intimidate, uh, boosting that physical defense even further for it and its partners. It has access to both Snarl and Parting Shot to decrease damage output even further. Uh, and it's known for using basically any item you can think of, the well, any defensive item you can think of. It's not really that keen on offensive items, save for Incinium Z Incineroar back in 2019 uh, to beat Lunala specifically. Uh, but uh, it would run like safety goggles, assault vest, focus sash on occasion in like um, restricted formats. Uh, yeah, it could, it could run basically anything. So Incineroar has everything it needs to, to succeed. It has access to fake out, Taunt, it usually has knockoff via Tutor, which I believe knockoff's a TM now, so you can get that. Uh, it's it's going to be a phenomenal Pokemon. Uh, what I will say before we begin is I think this is going to be the top team in the format. Incineroar, Rillaboom, Urshifu, Tornadus, Fluttermane, Chen Pao. It is literally the current top team, but you drop Hisui and Arcanine or Incineroar. That being said, I don't think Hisui and Arcanine will drop to absolute zero usage. I just think that it's going to shift in how it plays. We might see a pickup of Clear Amulet. Uh, we might see, well, Choice Band is honestly pretty fine, but maybe they'll pick up like Terra Ghost to avoid getting faked out turn one and try to one-shot the Incineroar. Uh, there are different ways to deal with this adaptation of the meta for um, Hisui and Arcanine, and even though it's not like on my list of Pokemon that I expect to rise, I think it's going to stay about the same in, well, not, it's not going to be the same because a lot of Incineroar overtake its spot, but like as far as it's like a niche within the metagame, it should remain to be like the same thing exactly. Uh, but yeah, uh, Incineroar and Rillaboom are a really, really common duo that you would see in VGC in Generation 8, and that's because defensively, they just work super well together. Incineroar is an intimidating fire type with access to fake out and parting shot. Rillaboom is a grass type with access to grassy surge, fake out, and U-turn, uh, and basically just being able to cycle these Pokemon with U-turn and, and parting shot and U-turn and parting shot and faking out everything makes it very difficult for an opponent to really get any momentum going. They're basically like able to shut down any momentum you really need them to, especially with 
uh, Rillaboom having access to the likes of like a Miracle Seed, Terra Grass, Grassy Glide this format, you might be able to just wear things down into range of that and win with that. Uh, but yeah, on top of that, Rillaboom's Grassy Surge provides recovery for both of them while also cutting the damage of Earthquake and Magnitude. Not that people use Magnitude, uh, but you know, I just want to mention that it also does that. But yeah, cutting Earthquake for the team is really big. Incineroar doesn't have to fear that at all. Uh, that's the main reason Landorus and other ground types run Stomping Tantrum or uh, High Horsepower, because the spread ground move Earthquake is just no longer a good option of EGC, purely due to the existence of Grassy Surge Pokemon like Rillaboom and in the past Tapu Bulu. Uh, Urshifu is the third Pokemon I think is going to be huge for this team, and that's just because it's, it's Urshifu, right? Uh, Rillaboom Urshifu is already a thing, Rillaboom Arcanine Urshifu is a thing, Incineroar Rillaboom Urshifu was also a thing, not only in like, uh, we we called it Spike Myth Cup. It was a format in Generation 8 VGC where uh, it was unofficial, but you would basically just ban Dynamax. These were a really common trio, uh, but even in restricted formats like Series 10 where Pokemon like Zacian and Groudon were legal, you would see these three together because of how well they, they work with each other. Like I said, the fake outs between these two allow you to shut down basically anything, and uh, Urshifu Rapid Strike being able to hit through Protect means that you can lock down one Pokemon that threatens Urshifu and then just go for the KO with it uh, with like Surging Strikes and just pick something up. Tornadus is uh, the final one of like the big four, I think. Uh, and that's just because it is Tornadus. It is the best speed control in the game at the moment. Yes, it will have to contend with Whimsicott, which is why I think that Mentalur basically becomes mandatory. Or Terra Dark, that's another option pr uh, to prevent it from getting taunted by Whimsicott, which are basically forced to run max speed. Um... But yeah, uh, uh, Tornadus being able to go for like Taunt, Tailwind uh, with priority to give uh, a speed boost to Rillaboom, Urshifu, and the rest of its partners. You already know how this guy works. Leak Wind Storm, etc. It's it's just like the best Pokemon uh, as far as speed control goes in the game. And I honestly think it's it's a problem Pokemon, and I want to make a video about that, like a long form video explaining why I think Tornadus is a, a huge issue for competitive. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely going to be on top. The final two... You can mess with these two slots. I think that it's going to be just your two offensive fast Pokemon. Choice Specs Fluttermane is likely not going to drop in usage. In fact, it'll probably rise in usage because uh, a Choice Specs Moonblast into Incineroar is actually pretty decent damage. If we take a look at this calc really quick, uh, Fluttermane, Choice Specs, uh, let's set it to level 50. Did I do it level 50? Come on. There we go. Uh, at level 50, Terra Fairy, Choice Specs, Moonblast into an Incineroar. It can calc to live that, but that's pretty absurd. Like, let's go modest. I want to see what Incineroar needs to do to live modest Moonblast with Terra Fairy and Choice Specs. So you see all the calcs, you know, Terra Fairy, modest Choice Specs. Uh, and let's go ahead and just see how much special defense it takes. It takes only that much. 156, that isn't that much, especially since you can actually run a Calm Nature in a lot of sets. Usually you'll go like Adamant, though, um, if you have like a higher attack set. But yeah, no, it doesn't take that much investment in the grand scheme of things since Incineroar doesn't even like running that much attack. Like, you can do this. Like, 156 to guarantee live the hit. Let's adjust that Incineroar spread real quick. 156. Done. That's an Incineroar. That is, like, a good Incineroar spread. Yeah, like, uh, Fluttermane is going to still remain high usage uh, because it can deal that massive burst damage into Incineroar. Uh, which is pretty big. It's like, even though it's like a uh, Pokemon that can get snarled and stuff, it's not really going to worry about that too much. It deals with the same things it deals with right now. I think a few new threats like Metagross might make it a little bit more of a, you know, iffy Pokemon, but I, I think it's going to be huge. Uh, I will say that one Pokemon I think that Incineroar is going to sort of put in its place. It might be Golden Go. I think Golden Go might actually drop a bit. Um, but yeah, final Pokemon, Chien Pao. You already know, Chien Pao, Urshifu, Rillaboom are a huge uh, trio within the metagame but also like other Pokemon that might fill that slot. Just anything like fast and super offensive can go there. I, I could even see like Iron Bundle um, on certain teams and Roaring Moon. Yeah, you know, you know how this goes. This is what I expect to be the top team. And with that context, here are the Pokemon that I expect to rise in usage for various reasons, whether they beat Incineroar or they work well with it. First off, I want to talk about the Pokemon that it feels like Game Freak made specifically for Incineroar, and that's Annihilate. So Annihilate previously was a Pokemon that was kind of locked to using, to being used next to Mousehold with side beat up strats with friend guard to make it uh, have like a super powerful rage fist. Uh, but 
Annihilate on its own isn't that bad either, especially with Incineroar next to it. Incineroar and Annihilate might not have the best defensive synergy, but an Intimidate user with Fake Out next to it is like really, really big. Um, so having that option is nice because it's going to make it a lot easier to be able to go for your bulk ups, which are a huge part of Annihilate's playstyle. So you can do like bulk up, Rage Fist, um, Drain Punch, and Protect. And you can go ahead and throw leftovers on your Annihilate. And there are many Terras you can go for. Personally, I'm a big fan of Terra Poison at the moment. Sometimes they'll run Terra Fire just because it allows you to uh, avoid getting hit super effective. Uh, or not super effective. What am I saying? It At the cost of being hit super effective by Urshifu Rapid Strikes and like Landorus and stuff, uh, you're able to avoid burns, which is uh, a way to shut down Annihilate. But also it allows you to switch in and eat hits defensively from uh, Fluttermane. So that's really, really big for it. Uh, Fluttermane being able to hit it super effectively on both of its types is really rough for it, so changing to Terra Poison and just getting a very neutral Terra is really solid. It also has really decent attack at 115, and it has the ability to find, which is the biggest part about it. So if we were to go to Annihilate and have an Incineroar with, let's say, 252 to, uh, HP, 4 defense, a pretty standard Incineroar, right? And it were to give Annihilate plus 1 because of Defiant off of its... Um, you know, what, what am I saying? Plus one off of Defiant because uh, it intimidates it. Then we see that a Drain Punch, even with no investment, is going to be doing 77 to 92%. If you were to go, and that's with like a non-attack boosting nature. If you were to go for an Adamant Nature Annihilate and give it that much, it's, it's not even that much in the grand scheme of things for Annihilate. Because, you know, Annihilate likes to have bulk, but having like some immediate offensive pres uh, presence might be big for it too. You can see that it's a guaranteed one-shot versus Incineroar at plus one with Drain Punch. And you still have the option to bulk up and like, uh, just like psych it out in that in that way. Like Incineroar might want to switch out on that or Terra and do whatever. And then you can just bulk up on that turn. Uh, another big thing is it's a Pokemon. Oh, sorry, that's my YouTube dashboard. Uh, it's a Pokemon that uh, will be able to switch in on parting shots if you want to predict that uh, and get an insane boost. Keep in mind, for every stat that gets lowered, you get plus two attack. So it's minus one special attack, minus one uh, attack. You end up at plus three after that. And it's basically GG. It's very hard to beat an Annihilate at that point. So I think Annihilate is actually really huge, both as an Incineroar partner and as an Incineroar counter. Um, I'm actually really excited to try it out. Annihilate is one of my favorite design Pokemon of the generation, but I don't like how it plays. It feels very gimmicky at the moment to me. So, um, and I don't think it's a good place in the metagame right now for it. But I think that um, this change to what's popular when Incineroar comes around might actually help it out quite a bit. King Gambit is basically the same concept. Um, it does have to defensively Terra versus Incineroar since it's weak to fire moves, but it is another uh, Pokemon that does have access to uh, Defiant. So just Incineroar being a common Pokemon in the metagame, making it so Intimidate is basically on every single team from now on, does increase the value of King Gambit teams quite a bit. Terra Fairy Gambit and Terra Poison are some of the more popular variants of it at the moment. Uh, they tend to run uh, the Dread Plate or the Black Glasses. They're literally the same item, just with a different skin. And they tend to just go with like, um, you know, like 196 attack, Adamant Nature, uh, a little bit of speed, and then mostly focused on like bulk and surviving hits. And that allows it to go for Swords Dances and just sweep through teams. You know how King Gambit works. It's, it's like a phenomenal Pokemon. It's very, very difficult to deal with for a lot of teams if you're not prepared. And yeah, uh, we'll, you know, we'll stick to the trend right now of Pokemon that benefit from Intimidate at least like because of their ability. Uh, and we'll skip over Ogre Pond Wellspring and come back to it. Let's talk about Defiant Ogre Pond Grass. Uh, like I said, Pokemon with Defiant, their stocks are way up purely because this Pokemon exists. And Ogre Pond Grass is one that is a little bit iffy and I was considering not putting it on the list, but it is actually something that we need to consider. Ogre Pond Grass, Jolly Nature uh, with the Life Orb at plus one from Defiant does have access to Stomping Tantrum, which is pretty common on it already because it has to deal with um, Heatran. Stomping Tantrum does do 85 to 100% at plus one. That isn't too much considering Incineroar can just one-shot it back with Flare Blitz, uh, but it is something notable. Like, it's a Pokemon that Incineroar has to respect. If Incineroar gets chipped down at all, like, if it goes down to, what, like, uh, you know, if it goes down to, like, 75% because it got hit by, like, a Stray Dazzling Gleam, now it's, in win now it's within range of Stomping Tantrum 100% uh, of the time. And Ogre Pond is a Pokemon that can lock it down. Um, I'm personally a big fan of this particular Ogre Pond set. You run Stomping Tantrum, sorry, Ivy Cudgel, Spiky Shield, and 
I can't click for the life of me right now. Spiky Shield and actually Encore. So the reason I like this is because Ogre Pond uh, Teal Mask actually gets a speed boost when it goes for its uh, Terra. So because of that, what you can actually do is Spiky Shield on a Fake Out. And then the next turn, depending on how fast that Pokemon is or what the board state is, you can actually lock them into Fake Out by going for that uh, Encore. And like it's also a Pokemon that can threaten... Uh, Fluttermane, and I, I want to mess around with this a lot more. I'm not going to talk too much about it in this video, but yeah, uh, Jamie Boyd showed that like speed boosting Ogre Pond is in a really good spot in the metagame at the moment, uh, but just being able to reliably get that Defiant in many games and lock things down with Encore, especially, you know, the Incineroar who wants to go for fake outs and stuff, it's really cool. It's a Pokemon I think that we should consider. Uh, and the final one that I think benefits, you could put Empoleon in this slot, but I think it's always going to be Milotic. Um, competitive Milotic, it was really big in VGC 2018 and in 2020 because the Incineroar Milotic interaction was super in Milotic's favor. It is a hard counter to many Incineroar variants. Uh, and that main reason is because it does have access to competitive plus Scald. And it's a Pokemon that wants to be defensive just like Incineroar, but its uh, speed stat is naturally higher, meaning that most Incineroar will never outrun a Milotic with 4 or 12 speed uh, investment. So with that, if you were to do this, if you were to take a Milotic, throw it in the damage calculator. Let's go with like OU defensive, set it to level 50. Let's go for special attack investment, calm nature, right? At plus two, your Scald is doing 83 to 99% to this super special defensive Incineroar. If you have like even like, if you have an even remotely offensive Milotic, if you decide to go like modest on it, which actually isn't that bad of an option either. Like special attack investments as low as what? As as low as like 92 are enough to one shot Incineroar with Scald. So yeah, keep that in mind. Milotic is a Pokemon that needs Intimidate to work. And the main reason that it sort of is in a rough spot in the metagame right now is because it, it's not really in a rough spot. It's that it's not being used at full value because uh, Rillaboom's running around. Hisui and Arcanine Rillaboom cover it really well together because even if the Milotic gets uh, that Intimidate into competitive boost, giving it plus two to threaten things. It has to go for Terra Dragon or some defensive Terra in front of the Rillaboom. And that means that it's going to be hit like, like neutrally by um, multiple moves in the game that are like kind of rough for it or super effective. So like you get hit neutral by Rock Slide already if you're a water type. But now that you're like Dragon, you're getting hit super effective by Ice Spinner from Chen Pao that's on that team, or Moonblast from Fluttermane that's on that team. It's a really rough spot for it right now, but if you were to move around what's popular, if you if Incineroar was a little bit more popular, which, you know, it's going to be in a couple of uh, weeks now, then yeah, Milotic will be able to do a lot more in the metagame. Oh, and Okie Dogi. Uh, I just threw Okie Dogi here because Okie Dogi feels like it was made to beat Incineroar as well. It's a super physically defensive Pokemon with 88 HP, 115 defense, 128 attack, really good speed and like decent bulk. And it's just another Pokemon with basically Defiant, Guard Dog, you know, if you're intimidated to get plus one attack. And it also runs like Drain Punch, Bulk Up stuff. It's it's like Annihilate, uh, but not Ghost type. That's the best way to put it. It's it's like another Annihilate. Poison Jab or Gunk Shot and Protect and Leftovers. Yeah, so pretty, pretty cool Pokemon. It beats Incineroar almost 100% of the time. Uh, and yeah, so those are like the Pokemon that benefit from Intimidate specifically. Uh, at least because of their ability. Now I'll just get into, we'll get into the Pokemon that benefit more from Incineroar existing because they want to be its partner in a second, but we'll talk about uh, counters really quick. Ogre Pond Wellspring, even though it doesn't like getting intimidated, uh, it is a Pokemon that sometimes runs Swords Dance, but it's Ivy Cudgel is the biggest thing for it right now. Ivy Cudgel, even at minus one, I believe one shots most Incineroar. So if you were to go to uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring here, Wellspring, Oh, you sword stance. Let's just go like Jolly 252. Uh, and we give it minus one attack, but also tear it and set it to level 50. You can see that Ivy Cudgel does 93 to 110% because of that. Um, for one, the the, uh, the uh, Wellspring Mask giving it a boost to its uh, moves across the board, but also just the fact that when you're tear it into a water type, you get that adaptability boost, meaning that even like a resist, even if it were like intimidated, you're still doing a ton of damage to a super effective hit like that. So yeah, uh, you have 
Why does it say guaranteed KO? That's not how it works. 93 to 110? Uh, yeah, all right. No, but it's it's a really high chance to KO. So yeah, Ogre Pond, decent Pokemon. Urshifu, 100%. Yeah, no, Urshifu, it wants to be uh, it wants to be its partner. It also wants to beat Incineroar. Urshifu is the reason Incineroar is going to want to run like Terra Water or Terra Poison or whatever. It, it can't remain weak to Urshifu because it is a hard counter to Incineroar. As a matter of fact, I feel like Game Freak... When they wanted to make like a legendary for the first DLC they were ever going to drop, they're like, you know what, this Incineroar guy, he's a little bit too strong. Let's make something that just beats it, right? And they went way overboard because Urshifu doesn't just beat Incineroar. Urshifu beats like everything, you know? So if we were to take any Urshifu, any Urshifu, let's go with like Uber Swords Dance. That's just Adamant 252, very standard uh, sort of spread. You know, we'll go Jolly. We'll decrease the damage even more. You can see, oh, that's the wrong Urshifu form. Urshifu, Rapid Strike, Regulation E Scarf, yeah, 156 Attack, Adamant Scarf, why not? Surging Strikes, always a one-shot in Incineroar. They have to invest. Ninety-two Defense, which is pretty high, but also, let's say that you just go even higher attack. Let's say that you're just a max attack one, right? They have to invest even more. Live that. 148. They can't do that and live like the Fluttermain thing. So having Fluttermain and Urshifu on a team together is a really good way to lock down Incineroar because it's not like they're going to live the double up ever. On top of that, Urshifu tends to run Terra Water. So a Terra Water Urshifu, it's, you're never going to live that. Like you can go 252, 252. You're not living Terra Water Surging Strikes, especially if they're running the Mystic Water. The Mystic Water sets just absolutely tear through Incineroar. Even if they go for like a defensive Terra, let's say that they're a Terra uh fairy right terra fairy or poison yeah we'll go poison it's not like it matters i'm just trying to think of like a hypothetical terra even if they go terra poison it's a two shot and that's because you ignore the intimidate you ignore any screens or whatever and you just go for it like it's a really rough matchup for incineroar so keep that in mind landorus um is another good pokemon for incineroar and that's because fake out is something that incineroar has to click into a lot of landorus to prevent getting KO'd by Stomping Tantrum. Um, and it makes it worse. It makes it worse for it because Stomping Tantrum doubles if the user's last move failed. So if they get faked out and they're intimidated, I don't care how bulky your Incineroar is, you're not taking the 150 base power Stomping Tantrum the next turn. You have to switch. So you better hope you have a Levitate Pokemon or like a Grass type or something. Um, clear Amulet also might rise in usage on this guy just because it makes it a little bit more uh, easy to pilot into Incineroar. You don't have to worry about attack drops. And also balanced teams just get a lot better and balanced teams love having Intimidate pivots. So keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, no, Lander is phenomenal into this guy. Basket Legion is another Pokemon that I expect to see rise a little bit because uh, Urshifu Rapid Strike, as good as it is into Incineroar, Basket Legion does have one thing over it and that's the fact that it can't be faked out. Like, if you, if you go for a fake on the Basket Legion, not going to work. It's a ghost type. Sorry. I don't make the rules. Also, adaptability is just a phenomenal ability for it. So even if you are intimidated and Basket Legion comes out, right? <laughs> Level 50. Let's go Jolly because a lot of them are Jolly Scarf right now. And its ability is adaptability. And it's at minus one attack. You can see. It's a non-Terrod Incineroar. It is a guaranteed one shot. They don't even have to run max attack to one shot you. And that's because the adaptability gives it double power on its stab moves. Like that, that's pretty huge. Also, Basket Legion just has like some pretty decent bulk. So you can actually see like Incineroar Tornadus Basket Legion teams being a thing. Um, I've actually been a big fan of Choice Scarf Basket Legion in the back recently. It's it's a cool Pokemon, you know. Um, I see it picking up quite a bit once Incineroar becomes legal. Um, other things that are more tangential. I, I did throw Tornadus on here, and that's just because Tornadus and Cinnaror, yeah, we already talked about that. Um, other Pokemon. Like I said, balance teams get a lot better. Sinistra and Porygon 2 are going to be huge next to Incineroar. Porygon 2, not currently in the game, but it is confirmed. Um, it's a Pokemon that does a lot for a team. You know, we talked about it in the last video where I was going through new Pokemon. It has Trick Room, it has Recover, it has Bolt Beam coverage, so you can go with Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. And yeah, no, it's it's just like a Pokemon that's very difficult to KO. Uh, there's a lot of situations next to Incineroar or Iron Hands even um, where you can just go ahead and go for Fake Out Trick Room. Uh, if your Porygon 2 is in a rough spot where it's like, oh, that close combat last turn did 60%, 
Uh, now I'm at 40. I think it's a roll. If I were to intimidate it, you switch in your incineroar, you go for the recover. It's a roll. You just barely live. You go back up to 50. Next turn, you fake out that Pokemon that was close combating you, go for another recover, and now you're back up to almost full. Like it's it's a huge Pokemon next to Incineroar. It's already really difficult to KO as is, but having the benefit of fake out, parting shots, snarl, intimidate to make it even more rough is just so big for it. Sinistra is the same for the same reason. <laughs> it's a Pokemon with the ability to absolutely shut down offense teams with the combination of Strength Set, Trick Room, Machigacha as its best stab option, and then for the final move, Rage Powder, right? It already typically runs Terra Water defensively because it allows it to beat Chen Pao, Urshifu, Tornadoes teams in that way. But with an Incineroar next to it, now you have an Intimidate Pokemon that threatens Fake Out and is able to perpetuate the Sinistra cycle, as I like to call it. So the Sinistra cycle is... Here, let me let me make a new team, right? Regulation-y. I call this the Sinistra cycle. So let's say you have an Incineroar and a Landorus. They work well together, right? Landorus there. No. What was that? Okay, Landorus Therian, Sinistra, and then like any final Pokemon will go with Iron Hands, right? These four Pokemon are a menace next to each other because turn one, you lead off with Incineroar, Sinistra. You go for Fake Out, you go for Trick Room. Next turn, you go for Parting Shot and you switch in Iron Hands for the Sinistra or whatever. Iron Hands gets on the field, Parting Shot back in the Sinistra. You know, if Iron Hands took any any damage that turn when it was switching in raw, then the Sinistra comes in and it heals it. Next turn, you go for Fake Out and you switch back in the Incineroar. You, re you reduce the damage even more. And then you go for the Parting Shot and you get back in the Sinistra. You can you turn in Landorus and stuff and just have that guy also be like switching in Sinistra. The more Sinistra switches in, the harder it is to KO the likes of Iron Hands or P2 or any bulky Pokemon that's next to it. Uh, I can even see like maybe Ting Lu being a thing in the future with this guy. I don't know. Just it, balance just gets so much better with Incineroar and like Sinistra is a huge balance Pokemon right now. Uh, well, it's not huge in that like a lot of people are using it, but it's a huge benefiter of balance teams. Uh, same with Ferrigraph. This is more of a hyper offense mod, funny enough, uh, because it's able to shut down uh, counterplay to the likes of like Reggie Drago uh, and just like other Pokemon that could shut down hyper offense, in including opposing hyper offense, your extreme speeds from Dragonites, your sucker punches, your aqua jets, your fake outs. Yeah, uh, Ferrigraph is going to be huge because it wants to be on a team with Incineroar. It's very bulky, intimidate, fake out, trick room, that sort of stuff, similar to Sinistra P2 but also being able to shut down Incineroar's leads. Incineroar wants to fake out things. It's 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 turn one fake out is basically it's bread and butter. Turn one parting shot is kind of hard though. You know, if you go for that, you're just, you're cool. Um, being able to switch in your Frigraph on that, prevent that and do whatever you need to with your hyper offense Pokemon with like your Reggie Drago or Golden Go uh, makes it really rough. And the final Pokemon, is it the final? Did I talk about everything else? Yes, uh, Pelipper. This is a weird one. Um, I think Pelipper gets better just because rain teams get better uh, because you want to be able to one shot the Pokemon that's pivoting in and out and preventing you from getting KOs with your offensive mons. So Pelipper existing and having access to, you know, Tailwind, Hurricane Hydro Pump and a Hydro Pump that one shots Incineroar because coming off of 95 special attack with effectively a choice specs off of Drizzle is just always going to be huge. Kingdra is also probably going to be pretty good for this reason. Kingdra is coming back as well. Um, in the rain, it can one-shot and Cinema pretty effectively. Yeah. So, uh, those are the Pokemon I just wanted to talk about today. Like, the fallout from Incineroar that I expect. Uh, like I said in the intro, I hope I said this in the intro, um, I don't... Usually, I don't make videos projecting too far into the future about, you know, here are the Pokemon that beat this, here are the Pokemon that are going to be good once this comes out. But Incineroar is such a ubiquitous Pokemon in VGC, and it's entered a format late in the game. Incineroar is like the stone cold Steve Austin of Pokemon, not only because he's like a pro wrestler, but because he never shows up at like the beginning of a match. It's always like, oh, the format's going great, or we've been playing for a few months, and then, you know, glass shatters, Psh! intro music plays, Incineroar enters mid-gen and just shakes things up. It did it in 2018, it did it in 2020, and now it's doing it in Gen 9. We know how this goes. Bulky teams get better. And I'm excited for that. So yeah, Wo Chen gets better. I'm just going to throw that in throw that in there at the end. Uh, if you enjoyed, you know, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Also, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Uh, you know, buy gamer subs, do whatever. 
See ya.